The CSS bundling for Rails Library is pretty great, and I think that it is going to usher in a new way in how we handle CSS assets in our applications, especially starting with Rails 7. And for the most part, I've been creating Rails 7 applications for all of the recent screencasts on Drift and Ruby, and included with that I've been using CSS bundling for Rails, as well as Bootstrap. However, there is a pretty cool project called MVP CSS, and there's a few others like this where there are no classes to use. It's all about the HTML elements, and so all the styling has been basically added to the elements instead of classes, so you don't have to remember anything. You just have to know how to lay out the elements so that they get picked up with the CSS. And that's pretty cool because it can make our views a lot more simple, and we would have an overall more unified application. Of course, I wouldn't use something like this on a real application that's going to be much larger, that's going to have a lot more visual elements. However, for something like a prototyping, I think this is a really good way to do it, because you can get some nice looking UIs without any effort. And another thing that we'll look at in this episode is Font Awesome. And I really like this project because it provides so many visual artifacts for free. Plus, there's a paid plan, which you can get a lot of different icons as well. However, when we start talking about importing in these kind of libraries into our Rails application, especially Rails 7 with CSS bundling, there seems to be a few different disconnects and things don't seem to work quite right. And in a lot of cases, when you try to import in stuff like Font Awesome, instead of getting the nice looking icons, you would just get a weird looking square. So in this episode, we're going to look at importing in the MVP CSS library, really just as a proof of concept on how we can import these, but then also look at Font Awesome, which is a bit more of a complicated situation because the references to these icons in the CSS is actually a URL. And when we try to get this up and running on our Rails application, not only does it mess up, but when we do eventually get it working and we try to push it to production with the assets pre-compile, we're not getting the pre-compiled fonts and that's also causing problems there as well. So in this episode, we're going to look at importing in both of these libraries and getting them working to a point where it works not only on our local development environment, but in the production environment as well. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.